be obedient to your word, but feel like every time I turn around, something is knocking at my door. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that there is no test. You can't have a testimony. We all have to go through things in life so that we can be what I like to call walking miracles. God has a way of using his toughest soldiers for his hardest battles. Can I say that again? God have a way of using his toughest soldiers for some of the toughest and hardest battles. Have you wondered why God chose you? Out of your bloodline to go through what you had to go through? And there's others that's in your family you probably even recommended that God use them. But he said, no, because they ain't strong as you. They ain't built for what I got to take them through. You know, on on one side, brothers and sisters, it's an honor. Then on the other side, it's hurtful. Can I say that again? On one side, it's an honor. But on the other side, it's hurtful. It's an honor that God decides to use me to go through the things of life. But then it's hurtful that I got to go through it and sometimes he won't talk to me. Have you ever been in that place in your life? Oh, you might as well go ahead and preach for a moment here. Have you ever been in that place in your life where you was talking to God? But it felt like he wasn't responding back to you. Uh, Have you ever been there where you've been asking God things and it felt like he just wouldn't respond back to you? Oh, oh, brothers and sisters, there are some things that have transpired in our life that was only designed for you and I to go through. There's some things, I told this to tell a main sermon here, help the preacher. There's some things that only uh, you could have went through and came out of it with the victory. Oh, but you know some of the friends you know, if they would have went through it, they would have killed themselves. They would have drank themselves to death. They would have smoked themselves to death. But you went through it, and after you went through it, you came out saying, look what the Lord had done. Are there anybody, are there any witnesses that's in here that can tell me this morning, Reverend, I may have a smile on my face, but you don't understand, I didn't even believe I'll make it to see the last Sunday in 2021. Reverend, I'm sitting here right now, I still don't believe that after all the things you've seen and I'm seen that I had to go through, I'm still It's not that you exempt. It's not that you are exempt. I'm almost done. You might as well go and get with me. It's not that you are exempt because of the same of people that you know that live the same, help me, Holy Ghost, lifestyle that you live. You sitting and you watching how they go through every day. They go through sickness, go through death. Going through losing their job, going through being evicted, going through being without a car. But every time you wake up in the morning, you can hit your light switch and your lights come on. Every time you wake up in the morning, you can go to the bedroom and the kids are still there, live and well. Every time you walk outside, they got your field goal. And you think I'm going to come to church and be quiet? The devil is alive. God has been too good to me. I don't got time to be quiet. I don't got time to be quiet. Because when I think of what God, Lord, have mercy, have done to me. That people wish they could raise their hand. That people that they wish, people wish they could get mad. 
And that's what I don't understand. How do we wake up on a Sunday morning, mother? We wake up. We get our good clothes on. We come to church and we sit here as mute Christians. And you know, Brother Deacon, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But I believe what the problem is Preach anyhow. Some of us haven't caught enough hell yet. Because you know how it is when something happens in your life, they can't keep you quiet in church. When something's going on in your life, you know the ones that got things going on, they come in here, and you can't keep them quiet because they like jam, right? I want to be quiet, but something in my bones. And I think that's what's wrong with the church. No, you've been living life thinking you've been getting away. Thinking God will give you another pass. And then I tell people all the time, I don't got time to talk about what you did. I don't got time to talk about who you got caught with. Because I'm still shocked God didn't get me. Can I say it again? I don't got time to be pointing a finger at you. Because I did the same thing. I didn't think it caught. That's why you ought to dance off grace and mercy. That's why you ought to get happy. Oh God and Preach. Because if it had not been for grace and mercy, the devil would have consumed you. Take your seat, son. Take your seats. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalm 119, watch this. Verse 67. All right. Listen to what it says. Before I was afflicted, mm -hmm. I did what? <laughs> Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. My God. Uh -huh. But now, have I did what? And the son had trouble of bringing back to the word. Yes, sir. And it's how trouble of bringing back to church. So, folks, you've been fighting the church for so long. Don't worry about it. They come. They come. And when they come, you better make room. Because they're going to tear this church up when they get here. Because the Bible says, before I was afflicted, I was doing what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Am I all right, man? Before, before these things start happening to me, yeah. I stopped doing the right things. And I tell people all the time, even with this pandemic and this COVID-19 experience and this Delta virus, and Rev, I know you'll help me testify to this. I said, I, I just thank God that he allowed us to go through a pandemic and he just didn't stop the world. All right. Yes, yes. Now want to talk to me. Yes. I thank God that he could have just stopped everything. Yes. Yes. I'm glad he slowed us down. Yes. Versus stopping the whole way. Yes. And then on top of it, on top of it, brothers and sisters, it gets me and it, it really... I almost want to bring tears to my eyes because we have went through this whole period of this situation of this COVID-19, the Delta virus, uh, 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 all this stuff we had experienced. We don't watch folks that died before they time. It wasn't time for them to go, but they left here and then God allowed the doors to open back up and when people come to church, watch this, they come in and do the same thing they were doing when they left. I know I won't be back when they go on the draw while I'm here. Yeah, 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 yeah. They come back and I'm telling you, if you were playing with God before the pandemic happened, Baby, when you come back, don't play with me, time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not just you, 
you are. But before I go to my exit, not just you all. Come on, sir. Not just you lay members. My Lord. Well. Not just you deacons. Yeah. My Lord. Not just you choir members. Well, well. You ushers and you nurses. All right. Church mother, not just you all. Well, well. But even these preachers. My Lord. Yes, my Lord. Come on now. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Even these anointed men of God. Yes. Mercy God. Mercy God. Let me put a pen here and tell you. That God gave us the mandate all right, all right. to preach in season and out. Out of season. If they hear it, mm. if they don't hear it. Right. Yeah. Preach. Mm. Preach. Now, my wife is a witness. I didn't ask nobody to come to church. All right. All right. Church, I met now only, we only two Sundays a month. I didn't ask nobody to come to church. But I had a mandate. All right, all right, all right. That I had to stand at the desk mm. and proclaim Jesus Christ mm. rather if someone came or not. We as preachers cannot blame the church for being a sinful world and being a sinful congregation us, if we God. are not giving them spiritual advice. If they came here to preach, who else they going to hear? All right. my God. My, my, my. Amen. And I tell people, we have to learn mm. yeah. that whenever we sit back oh, oh. and do not Tell people what God said. Yes. Well, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they walk out this door <clears throat> and don't do what they want to do. My Lord. My, my, my. And don't have no knowledge my Lord. of what both be going on in their life. The blood is on your face. Yes. 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 yes, sir. Oh, yes, it is. Lord. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Amen, amen. Verse 16. God. Thou art good uh -huh. and does good. And teach me thy statutes. Thou art good. And does good. Teach me thy statutes. Don't you know that God is a good God? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. It had to happen. It had to happen. I think about it. How Adam, Adam uh, was given a command. Uh -huh. My Lord. Uh -huh. The command Adam was given. The command was Adam, there are many trees in this garden. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. All right, all right. But Adam, there's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one. That you cannot eat from. Mm. Right. Mm. And you got many options. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. But there's only one. All right. Yeah. All right. You cannot eat from. All right, sir. Adam heard God. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Come this is going to bless somebody. All right. Come on, preacher. He heard God, but he listened to me. Holy Ghost, help us. Bless us, Holy Ghost. Oh, God. So that we don't eat from the tree. That's right, yes, sir. Yeah. But God never told Eve <laughs> she couldn't eat from that tree. Yeah. 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 The Bible said that one day, one day, oh, this thing that makes men weak, mm -hmm. which sometimes is our significant others. Or oh, Eve presented this fruit, and they call it a red apple. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. To Adam. Uh -huh. Adam went on and 
disobey God. Yes. And the world was cursed. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, once the world became cursed, we was in a bad place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So God looked down and said, I got a well that need to be saved because of man's disobedience. So Jesus, which is God's only begotten son, he went down or came down rather to die for mankind. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So many people ask me and they said, Reverend, why did Jesus really come? All right. All right. I said, because Adam messed up. You know, Jesus did no wrong. Mm, well. Well, well, well. The Bible said that he didn't even know sin. Yeah. Well. But he came All right. to redeem us. So when he came to redeem us. He did not uh, come to redeem us just for us to be quiet. And, but he came so that uh, we can tell men's boys and girls that the wages of uh, a sin is still there. But the gift of God is eternal life. And so I just come by to tell greater St. John that whatever you had to go through in this year, you better understand it had to happen. Look at somebody and see it had to happen. It had to happen. Yeah. And you said, Reverend, what do you mean it had to happen? And I will come down the lane and see if I can talk to you for a moment. Yeah. And you prayed and you said, God, don't take my loved one. Yeah. He said, God, let them live on. Yeah. God, take them from the pain that they're going through. Yeah. And, but then when God took them, you got upset. Yeah. I'm going to tell y'all, when you ask God to heal them, it don't matter if they heal them in Mississippi or in glory. Yeah. And you said, Reverend, I still don't understand why it had to happen. Well, you remember when you went to the doctor and they said you had cancer. And, and the only thing you can think about is God, I don't want to die with cancer. All right, all right. And, but uh, before the doctor told you you had cancer, and, uh, you wasn't praying. Right. No, you wasn't talking to the Lord. You wasn't reading your Bible. And I want to put a pin here and tell you, trouble or tell the truth. Yeah, you will. You want to know if a person really got Jesus in their life, let trouble him. 
When trouble come their way, you won't have to tell them to lift your hand. You won't have to tell them to say glory, hallelujah. You won't have to tell them to say thank you, Jesus. They'll be like an old song, the old song chain that I came to Jesus just as I was. And I want to know that anybody in here this morning that can tell me that you was told up from the flow up, but God accepted you in. Yeah, you was a cusser like Peter, you was a drunk like Lot, you was a murderer like David. Yeah, but God still took you back in. Yeah, and so what I'm telling you here is the Lord gave you a chance to come back up in here. You better remember what Grandmama said. She said this may be my last time. Maybe my last time. I don't know. So what you're saying, Reverend, every time you come in here, you better dance, you better clap, you better scream, you better jump, you better say, Lord, I thank you. Is there anybody that can get out in here and say thank you? I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 